In this video, I'm going to show you something super cool. That's the bleeding edge of blockchain technology. Let's say I have some Bitcoins and you have some Ether and we want to trade. How are we going to do this? We could use a centralized exchange like Coinbase. But what if we want to trade in a decentralized way without any intermediary? Can we use a decentralized exchange like Uniswap? No, we can't because decentralized exchanges are only for assets on the same blockchain. But our trade involves two blockchains. Bitcoin and Ethereum. Atomic swaps are here to save us. With Atomic swaps, you can trade assets across blockchain in a decentralized way, peer to peer in a safe manner. In this video, I will explain how Atomic swap work. I will also show you how to code the hash time lock smart contract in Solidity, which is a key element of an Atomic swap. And finally, I will do a live demo of Atomic swap by transferring ERC20 tokens between Ethereum and the Binance smart chain. And if you don't know me, I'm Julian and on my channel Eat the Blocks, I teach DeFi and blockchain development. And before we continue, if you want to become a professional blockchain developer and make $100,000 per year, register for my free training below. It's going to give you some very important tips for how you can make it in the blockchain industry. It's going to save you a ton of time and effort. Check it out. So let's see how atomic swaps work. So let's say we have two blockchains, Ethereum and the Binance Smart Chain. So just to be clear, Binance is originally a centralized exchange, but they also launched a blockchain called the Binance Smart Chain. So Bob has an ERC20 token on Ethereum called Token A. Alice has an ERC20 token on the Binance Smart Chain called Token B. They want to exchange their token with an atomic swap. First, Bob will pick a secret like Abracadabra. I pick Bob for the example, but the secret could also be picked by Alice instead. It doesn't matter. Bob will then calculate the hash of the secret. A hash is a cryptographic signature. So you can calculate the hash of any data. If you change just one bit of the input data, its hash will be completely different. You can go from the data to the hash, but not from the hash to the original data. Next, Bob will deploy a hash time lock smart contract on Ethereum and send token A to the contract. This HTLC contract is coded to release the token A to Alice only if she knows the secret. But at this stage, she doesn't know the secret yet. The hash we calculated previously is used to check that the sender of the transaction knows the secret. I will show you this more in details in the next section when we will code the HTLC contract. Next, Alice will deploy another hash time lock smart contract on the Binance smart chain and she sent token B to this contract. This HTLC contract is coded to release token B to Bob only if he knows the secret. Next, Bob is going to withdraw token B from the HTLC contract on the Binance smart chain by using the secret he created. When Bob withdraw this token, the smart contract will also save the secret in the blockchain, which will reveal it publicly. Next, Alice will read the value of this secret and use it to withdraw token A on the HTLC contract on Ethereum. And that's it, the atomic swap is completed. So what about security risk? First, when the secret was revealed by Bob, the token A on Ethereum was still secure because the smart contract will only release the token to the address of Alice. If anyone else tried to steal token A with the secret, it wouldn't work. Then what if Bob never withdraw token B from the Binance smart chain and never reveal the secret? Will token A and token B be locked forever? There is a security mechanism for that. So in the HTLC contract, there is a function to return the token B to Alice after a certain time if Bob doesn't withdraw the token during a predefined time period. That's what we call the withdrawal time. Likewise, token A can be returned to Bob after a certain time. Finally, there is a last risk, a little bit more subtle. So what if Bob withdraw token B just before the end of the withdrawal period? In this case, he will get token B, but Alice needs to wait Bob withdrawal to see the secret. And it might be a little bit too late when she tried to withdraw token A, as it will reach the end of the withdrawal period and Bob will be able to withdraw token A on Ethereum as well. To prevent against this, you can make the withdrawal period of token B shorter than the withdrawal period of token A. Even if Bob waits until the last moment to withdraw token B, it doesn't matter because Alice will have enough time to withdraw token B before we reach the end of the withdrawal period. Okay, so now you understand how an atomic swap works. Next, we're going to code the essential ingredient of an atomic swap, the hash time lock smart contract. 
So we are going to code our hash time lock smart contract in Solidity and for that I'm going to use the online editor Remix. So in Remix I'm going to create a new file for our smart contract htlc.so we are going to use the latest version of Solidity currently that's 0.7.4 and since we are going to manipulate ERC20 tokens we will need to import the interface of ERC20 so for that we are going to the github repo of open zeppling which is a famous Solidity library that has a standard implementation for various token standards including ERC20 and we go in token ERC20 I ERC20 and we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna need two function transfer and transfer from oh let me copy this okay Okay, so we only need transfer allowance. We don't need it. Approve. We don't need it. And transfer from. Okay, we're gonna call this I I C twenty. Okay, so then we're gonna define our smart contract. And first, we're gonna define a variable for the start time. So that's the beginning of the residual period and then another variable that's going to define the duration of the residual period so for example 10,000 seconds and then a string is going to store the secret only after it's revealed so we're going to choose abracadabra and then we will need to store the hash of this secret. So by 32 public hash. And here in order to calculate this hash, we're going to use another smart contract that I've already prepared. So here I created this function calculate hash. It received a string argument and calculate its hash like this. So in solidity, we calculate hashes with this function kchak256 and we use this other function inside because kchak256 wants a bytes argument so in order to transform anything into a byte then you can use abi encode pact and it's going to return a bytes 32 so after we're going to deploy this so deploy this contract and here we're going to specify our string and here we can see our hash so we copy this and we paste it here then we're going to define the recipient for the token to be transferred so it's going to be alice or bob depending on which blockchain we deploy this contract and then the owner so that's for the refund function. If the token is not withdrawn within the withdrawal period, then with this safety mechanism, we can return the token to the initial owner, as I explained before. Then we specify the amount of token to be transferred. Then we also gonna have a pointer to the token. After we define a constructor that is executed when we deploy our contract, so we're gonna pass it the recipient, the address of the token, and the amount to be transferred. Uh, we're gonna initialize a couple of variables so the recipient, then the owner. This is gonna be the sender the deployer of this contract then the amount and finally the token we instantiate a pointer by using the interface we created before and we pass the address of the token and next we're gonna create a function to fund the contract with the token so this is external and 
that's when we're going to initialize start time with the current timestamp when this transaction is mined. Then we're going to transfer the token from the sender to our contract. And for the amount that we specify before here in the constructor, then we need to withdraw, be able to withdraw the token. So for that, we need to provide the secret. And we're going to make sure that the secret is correct. So for this, we're going to use the Ketchak256 function, the hashing function of Solidity. Then MB, ABI encode pack to convert our secret into a byte. And this needs to be equal to the hash. And the error message is wrong secret. And after we gonna store the secret on the blockchain so that we can reveal the secret to Alice. And after we're going to transfer the token to the recipient for the amount that was specified. So even if this is not the recipient which called this function, it doesn't matter because we here we are going to transfer to the recipient. So it's not possible to send a token to someone else. And finally, we need the escape hatch. If nobody sent a token before the end of the withdrawal period, we need a refund function. So first, we need to make sure that we are after the withdrawal period. So the current timestamp needs to be higher than the end of the residual period. The error message is too early. And if this condition is satisfied, then we refund the initial owner of the token. And that's it. And in the next section, I'm going to show you how we can actually run our atomic swap using our smart contract. We are going to do an atomic swap between Ethereum and the Binance Smart Chain. So for the demo, we are going to use the Covan testnet for Ethereum as well as the testnet of the Binance Smart Chain. The procedure is exactly the same for the mainnet networks. For the demo, we are going to deploy our own ERC20 tokens, Bob own token A on Ethereum and Alice own token B on the Binance Smart Chain and they are going to swap their tokens. We need to prepare a couple of things. First, we need to create addresses for Bob and Alice. So you can use this website for this. You create two addresses and for each of them, you need to copy the address and the private key. So I've already done this. Next, in order to pay for transaction fees on Covan, we need Covan Ether and on Binance Testnet, we need Testnet BNB tokens. So we are going to fund both addresses with Covan Ether and Testnet BNB tokens. For Covan, you can get some Covan tokens with the Covan faucet. There is a small caveat here because you can only use this faucet once per day. So you fund one of the address and after you use MetaMask to send some Ether to the other address. For the testnet BNB token, there is also a faucet and this time there is no limit. So you can fund your two addresses directly there. After, you will also need to have a connection URL to Infra. Infra is a service to connect to the different network of Ethereum, mainnet, as well as testnet like Covan. You need to create a free account on Infra. Then in your dashboard, you create a new Ethereum project and you copy the HTTP connection URL for Covan. Next, you need to download this truffle project I've prepared. So it's in the GitHub repo of it, the blocks in this folder. So after you download the project on your laptop, you need to open it with your code editor and you also open a terminal and at the root of the project, you run npm install to install all the dependencies. So after I'm going to show you the main folders and files. So in the contracts folder, we have all our smart contracts. So first the HTLC smart contract that we created in the previous section. Migration.sol, this is used internally by Truffle and token.sol. So this is a smart contract for the token A and token B that we are going to deploy. And after in the migration folder, we have the migration file that tells Truffle how to deploy all our smart contract. So the important migration is in deploycontracts.js. So first we import our two smart contract token and HTLC. 
after we extract our two addresses for Bob and Alice. And so if we run this migration for Kovan, we deploy token A and in token A, there is a built-in faucet. So it's going to give one token to Bob when you, when you deploy the contract. And after we are going to deploy the HTLC smart contract and we give the arguments to the constructor. So the recipient for token A is Alice. Then we give the address of token A, the amount is one token and the sender is Bob. And after Bob needs to call the fund function on the HTRC contract in order to start the process. But before we need to approve the token to be spent by the contracts, that's what we do here. And below we do the same thing, but for the Binance testnet. So this time we deploy token B and for the HTRC contract, the argument will be a little bit different. So this time the recipient is Bob, the address of the token is for token B. And after we call the fun function, but from Alice this time. So here, this is where you send your token B to the LTRC smart contract. So next, I'm going to show you what we have in the configuration of Truffle. So in this configuration file, we need to tell Truffle how to connect to the two networks, so Kovan and the Binance testnet. And for that, we need to create an object called a provider. So we have one provider per network. So here. We have one provider for Kovan and another for Binance. So in order to build this provider object, we are going to use a dependency called Truffle HD wallet provider. And when we build a provider, we need to pass an array of the private keys so for Bob and Alice and also a URL to the network. So here I'm going to copy paste from my notes. So the private keys of Bob and Alice and the URL for Kovan. Okay, so back in my file. So let's put the URL of Kovan here. And then for the two private key, uh, let's format this properly. Okay, I'm going to copy paste the private keys here and for the URL to the Binance testnet. So you don't need to create any project in Infra. So there is a public URL for that. And for your reference, I found this in the documentation of the Binance smart chain. Okay, so next we're going to scroll down and here. So in the networks object, that's where we define the different network and we pass a provider object for each of them. We also need to specify the network ID and this parameter gas is the default gas limit. So I chose 5 million gas, which is an arbitrarily very high amount so that we're not bothered by the gas limit. Okay, so it's time to run our migration. So I open a terminal console here and at the root of the project, I'm going to run the migration with truffle migrate reset. And we chose for the network Kovan. Okay, so we've deployed token A and the HTC, HTLC contract to the Kovan network. And next, we're going to run the migration this time for the Binance testnet. Okay, so now we've also deployed token B and the other HTLC contract to the Binance testnet. So next, Bob is going to redraw token B from the Binance testnet. So for that, we're going to start a truffle console that connects to the Binance testnet. So truffle console and we specify we want to connect to Binance testnet. And first, we are going to get the addresses of Alice and Bob. So inside the truffle console, we can use Web3, web3.east get accounts and here this is the addresses of Alice and Bob of Bob and Alice sorry next Bob is going to withdraw his token but first we need to have a pointer to the HTRC contract 
so for that we can use the name of the smart contract which is injected directly by the truffle framework and we use the deploy method okay and now if we do strc.address we should find the same address that we saw previously when we run the migration so next we are going to call the withdraw function and we're going to pass the secret so abracadabra and this is going to be from the first address which is the address of bob okay so our transaction is successful so we can actually check that bob did receive his token so for that we couldn't get a reference to token b like this and then we're going to get the balance of token b like this so wait token balance of and we want the balance of bob so that's the first address here and then balance to string because what we get here is a javascript number of the bn.js library and so we can see that bob did receive his token so it works so next we are going to create another truffle console connected to the Kovan network so that Alice can also withdraw her token. So truffle console network Kovan. Okay, so like for Banning Testnet, we gonna grab the addresses. We also gonna grab a reference to the HTLC contract. And if you do htlc dot addresses address, you're gonna see a different address than the htlc contract we got deployed on Binance testnet. This is normal. So now Alice needs to read the secret from the Binance testnet. So we are going to go back to the other console connected to Binance testnet, and we can read the secret like this. So my secret. We call the HTLC contract and we call the secret method because we define the secret string on the HTLC smart contract as a public variable. So Solidity automatically creates a getter function. And so here, if we read my secret, we can see abracadabra. So that's how Alice gets to know the secret. So now back in the console of Kovan, we are going to call the withdraw function with the secret abracadabra and this is going to be from Alice so addresses one okay so let's send this transaction any transaction was successful so now let's verify that we did receive the token so first we grab reference to token B like this and after we get the balance of Alice like this and then balance to string one yes it worked so what can you do next with this atomic swap well first you can apply the same technique across any two blockchain that are based on the ethereum technology for example there is hyperledger bezu tron and there are many others then you can use atomic swaps to build your own cross-chain decentralized exchange this is a very important problem that hasn't been solved yet and there are only a couple of projects working on this like atomic dex or one chain so it's a good idea to work on this if during this video you struggle a bit to understand solidity you should check out my playlist on solidity where i explain all the concepts in short videos that focus on very specific concept my students really love that playlist or on the contrary, if you find this video a bit too easy and you want to challenge yourself, you can check out my other playlist on the DeFi project where we build more advanced blockchain projects. I'll see you there.